Thank you for visiting my Snowflake Certification Knowledge Series video. In this video, I will help you understand the semi-structure data key concept in Snowflake from certification point of view. Majority of the data warehouse storage system supports different kind of format, especially JSON and Parquet. And considering the variety of data set which an enterprise may have, Snowflake has a special consideration for semi-structure data format and how to ingest and process them effectively for your use case. The rich function libraries helps developer to become more productive without additional complexity in data processing. And that's why Snowflake emphasizes so much of semi-structured data type and data processing. In this short video, we will cover semi-structured data type fundamentals, key concept, tips and tricks, decide sample questions with detailed explanation to reinforce your understanding. So why this subject area is so important? A Snow Pro guide clearly indicate that around 5% questions will appear from semi structure data type. So I don't need to tell you how important this subject area is for your success. The difficulty level in this subject area is also a bit high compared to traditional data types. The questions are combined with micro partitioning concepts, data loading and unloading concepts and underlying storage style. Majority of the questions are asked from JSON format and how best JSON data set can be loaded for efficient processing is the focus during the exam along with basic concepts. Evro, ORC, Parquet and XMLs are important, but JSON gets first priority over other file formats. All my videos are divided into a smaller section. We can call them chapters. You can refer them inside the video panel. As you can see here that each chapters are having a demarcation when you hover over those demarcation, you can see which chapter it is currently. And you can jump to the specific chapter by clicking. Alternatively, you can also click on the description section and you can refer those videos directly. This will help you to save time and navigate to the different sections of the video quickly. What is my primary intent to make these videos for you? Well, we all know that the Snowflake is a feature of Cloud Data Warehouse. Considering the fact I decided to be a certified Snowflake developer and an architect and spent around six weeks along my day job to clear the exam. I cleared the certification at the first attempt with fairly good marks. I was happy, but I was not very satisfied, especially after my certification attempt. I realized I could score nearly 100%. And some of the conceptual gap kept me away from the center. And hence, I decided to share my experience, the focus area, tips and tricks with all of you. If these videos helped you score better or near 100% or 100%, I would be very, very happy. So let's begin with this chapter. Let's look into the detailed syllabus before we deep dive on the key concept. Same structure is a dedicated subject area and Snowflake gives high importance to it. There are two primary subsections in this subject area. Different data formats like JSON, Parquet, ORC, XML, and how they fit into the variant data type. Native SQL syntax and how to flatten the nested data structure is another important thing from the Snowflake exam point of view. So let's start with semi-structure data overview. Semi-structure data type used to represent arbitrary data structure. A true and false question may come, can be used to import and operate on semi-structured data, JSON, Avro, ORC, Parquet, XML. A question may come, uh, which may confuse with other data formats like HDFS. Snowflake stores this type internally in an efficient compressed columnar binary representation. Very important thing to remember. Semi-structure is also called variant type or sometimes it is interchangeably called universal type which can hold any type of data, object as well as array, variant. What is the maximum size? 16 MB compressed. Please remember it is a compressed 16 MB. A value of any data type can be implicitly cast to a variant value subject to the size restriction. So here is an example. So he, we can see that a 56 is converted into variant before it is being compared. Let's continue. Variant columns in a relational table are stored as a separate physical column. In a variant column, null values are stored as a string containing the word null. When semi-structured data is inserted into a variant column, Snowflake extract as much of the data as possible to a columnar form based on certain rules. This is also very important questions and this is done for the efficient retrieval mechanism. Let's talk about object array data types and unsupported data types. 
objects are used to represent collection of key value pairs key is a non empty string and the value is a value of variant type the snowflake does not currently support explicitly typed object we cannot specify that this value is a string or this value is an int so that is not supported so keep it in mind array used to represent dense or sparse array of arbitrary size uh, important question uh, it may confuse you with the uh, uh, size limit and all those supported data type please remember a uh, multi choice question may come from this point lobs large objects are not supported alternatively you can use the binary which has a maximum 8 mb length clop that is corrector but you can also use it var char and nu you can use and user defined data type so these are the four data types which are not supported in snowflake so keep it in mind now let's quickly look into the examples and sql syntax so sql syntax are pretty simple so as you see on the screen there are variant array object number and var char and when you describe the table everything comes and you can see how the data is stored i recommend that you please try playing with variant data type load some json extract some data from there and understand its behavior it is very very important for you to understand how the native sql works when it comes to json and any other semi structured data types let's talk quickly about querying semi structured data type snowflake supports sql queries that access semi structured data like a json avro varc and parquet but not xml traverse pattern insert a colon between the variant column name and any first level element example column name and the first level element query output is enclosed in a double quote because the query output is variant and not a var char operators like colon and subsequent dot or a bracket always return a variant values containing strings there are two ways to access element in json object dot notation as you can see here the sales person dot name or a bracket notation so here a sales person in a bracket then another bracket represent the name of the element regardless of which notation you use the column name is a case insensitive but the element names are a case sensitive so the first one is right the second one is right but the third one is wrong because sales person is in a caps repeating element so you may have a repeating element like in the car sales data set we have a lot of vehicles so you can access the repeating element through the index and this is another example like repeating element dot price you can get the price so i suggest please populate some json data and play with the native queries and how to access the data within a json it will be very very helpful for you to understand the json and the query concept within snowflake now the last point is that explicit casting so you can always explicit cast a particular values through the double colon so double colon is an alias for cast now these functions are very important like flatten pass json and get you may get at least one questions from the flatten for very sure not very confident if they ask a questions from the pass json or a get but flatten would certainly be asked in some form or other so what is flatten so flatten is a table function that produces a lateral view or excluded view of a variant object or array using the flatten function to parse nested array get function accept a variant object or array data type value as a first argument and extract the variant value of the element in the path provided as a second argument parsing text as a variant value using the parse json so if you have a json data inside a variant data type you can use the parse json function to explode the data so here is example of a flatten using a lateral keyword you can really join two or three stuff and get the result my suggestion is that please try this examples in your free trial edition and get your hand dirty with the sql before we start the questions and explanation i would like to have my disclaimer all those mock questions are just a representation based on my experience and are indicative the scope of the content in the exams may evolve and that's why i prefer that you please refer the current syllabus and the snowflake documentation and have this mock question as a reference to help you before we start let me help you how to navigate this mcqs along with question the type also appears which indicate if it is a true and false single or multi choice question the snowflake certification exam also helps candidate with number of correct options in case of multi choice 
here i am not following that approach to make sure you find the solution by yourself without any hint options appears one by one and once all the answers or options appeared you can pause and attempt the question finally the question complexity and confusing indicator also appears along with the correct answer an emoji also is added just to make sure that if this question is a confusing question or a straightforward question and finally explanation text and any supporting document if available would appear on the screen so let's start 15 mock questions for semi structured data type question 1 question 2 question 3 question 4 question 5 question 7 question 8 question 9 question 10 question 11 question 12 question 13 question 14 question 15 and the last question here are the important resources and the documentation link i request you to go through each of this link and build your understanding all the best for your snowflake certification exam
you can refer the description section of the video for important links and reading material. Please do share and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when the new Snowflake certification content is published. If you find any one of the content or the information is incorrect or inappropriate or not aligned with the Snowflake documentation, please share your feedback via comment section.